In the last video that I did called The Rapture is Not for the World to See, we started off using a scripture in Revelations that says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And when I think of a testimony, I think of what a person says and what a person does in their life. And so when we look at the Lord Jesus and look at his life, we're looking at things that point to uh, prophetic events down the road. Now we can uh, always get uh, prophetic meaning out of everything that the Lord did, but there are things that we can understand in relationship to uh, prophecy for the church based on uh, the way the Lord reacted in his own uh, uh, life while he walked in uh, Israel, in the land of Israel. I'm thinking of a specific time when in, uh, we want to go to John chapter 7. I want to read this and make a... a an application, I guess, is the best way to say it, uh, to the fact that God does do some things in secret. And for this uh, idea that people have that uh, the rapture is, there's no such thing as the secret rapture, uh, and it's kind of upsetting to them to even say that, I just want to show that even in the life of Jesus, there were times when he kept secrets. And there were times when he said no when uh, he was uh, asked to do things, uh, given a guilt trip, so to speak, to do them, because uh, people knew that he could do miracles and things, but he would just say no. Well, anyway, let me uh, go to John chapter 7, and let's read this passage of Scripture. Starting with the ver first verse, After these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Interesting, there's a time in the, the life of the Lord when he would not uh, walk in uh, uh, circles where people were seeking to kill him. And then it says this, now the Jews, verse 2, now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. That's a very good study to do, by the way, uh, the tabernacle, the feast of tabernacles. It has a lot to show us. Uh, about uh, Israel and the promises God made to Israel, the how he delivers Israel, and the how they're to honor him in this Feast of the Tabernacles. It's a weekly feast. It uh, happens once a year. Anyway, his brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go unto Judea, that thy disciples also must see thy works that thou doest. Well, they wanted him to go up to the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem. And they're saying, you need to go up there, Jesus, so that your brother can see some of those, your brethren can see some of those works that you do uh, that are only from God. Now this is, uh, if you'll get into this, uh, what's going on here, it's a little guilt trip going on here on the part of his brethren, uh, his family members, to get him to go to Jerusalem. Anyway. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. Very interesting phrase. Show thyself to the world. Show the world who you are. Prove to the world who you are. Well, the Lord knew this was uh, a little guilt trip, a little false guilt trip being given to him by his own family. Then it goes on in verse 5, For neither did his brethren believe in him. They kind of had some doubts about him. Not that he couldn't do some things, but they, they just were pushing him uh, to go to Jerusalem to the Feast of Tabernacles to show himself to the world. Not just to the Jews, but to everybody. Then in verse 6 it says, Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast. He tells his own family and his brethren, you guys go on, on up to the feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. There's a lot of prophetic meetings in this. And of course, uh, the immediate uh, meaning is in relationship to the time when he was going to go to the cross. But there's uh, other things that we can derive out of this to show how God thinks about 
uh, prophetic events in relationship to the church, as well as to uh, the second coming of the Lord. Then it says this, When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. So they left, and he stayed in Galilee. He basically said to them, No, I'm not going. And uh, I, 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 I kind of like that because there are some times uh, when we're uh, dealing with uh, church members, family members, where we just need to say no sometimes. Uh, even though uh, we want to uh, please people, there's just th things that we need to say no about. Well, here's the, the Lord did that. He said, no, I'm not going up. And so, but when, it says here, this is in verse 10, but when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were, in secret. My application of this is to, in relationship to the rapture of the church. The world likes this confusion going on between people who believe there's going to be a rapture and people who believe that uh, there's not going to be a rapture as far as uh, the church is concerned. They like seeing that. There's been books written about it. They like reading about it. But the, the point is that when God does something, he's not doing it to impress the world. And when we're being challenged uh, concerning uh, this doctrine of the rapture, we need to be careful that we're not falling into some kind of a thinking pattern that's like the brethren of Jesus who were giving him false guilt trips about going up to the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's what happens in our uh, doctrinal differences sometimes between uh, uh, post-trippers, pre-rathers, and, and uh, pre-trippers. Lots of guilt trips going on. Lots of things being said that just aren't uh, necessary. We're in here, the Word of God, to study it, to find out what it says. And if you don't like the applications of one or the other, then uh, find your own applications in the Scripture and see if it proves out to be true. All I'm saying is that in relationship to the rapture, it's not for the world to see. And Jesus in his own life, in his own testimony before believers, after the resurrection, appeared, disappeared, and reappeared several times. Showed he could do that. And so when we're talking about going up to the Feast of Tabernacles and showing the world who Jesus is, Jesus is not going to uh, fall for that. This isn't something that he has to worry about the world uh, patting him on the back for. It's family business. And that's what the rapture is. It's family business. And we're going to be raptured before the tribulation to be with the Lord. The only thing I would say about that so that uh, rap rapture folks don't get fired up too much, although that's plenty to get fired up about, is that when we get raptured, we're going to get raptured to stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ and give an account, each individual, as a believer, before the Lord for the way we walked as a believer, the way we thought, and for the things we said. And he's going to weigh those things in the balance and a lot of reward and crowns and, and uh, future rights to rule in the kingdom age when he comes back at his second coming are on the line, and that is very important. Nothing to be laughed about, nothing to be poo-pooed about, and saying that that's no big deal. It is. The Lord taught it. It's shown to us in the, the letters to the seven churches. And so the rapture is going to be a fantastic event for the church, for the body of Christ. And it can be, and is going to be, something done so quickly that it's done in secret as far as the world's concerned in comparison to uh, the way they like to see things set up so they can see what's going to happen. Here we have in John chapter 7 a way to see how God didn't do what people wanted to and in secret went up to the Feast of Tabernacles 
without any fanfare, without any pats on the back. He finally went up. Of course, he was going to, but he wasn't going to be pushed up in a, with a false guilt trip to go there for the reasons they wanted uh, the Lord to go there for. He was going to go there and uh, do the things that he had to do as far as his father's will was concerned. But my point is, it was done in secret. And to just throw this thing off uh, to the side as if God doesn't do things in secret, well, he does. And the rapture is going to happen so fast that it's going to be as if it was in secret as far as the world is going to be concerned. They're not going to know what hit them when we're gone.